right, well, I'm going to begin. If you're logging in, go ahead and keep going. We're on a few slides before we get to that. So yesterday we talked a little bit about ideas. And I was back there throwing some ideas around, like what you want to do. And working down, you saw the wet lab. Working down the wet lab is really fun and, and getting your hands on, looking at microscopes and all that kind of stuff. But before you do that, you have to come up with an idea. You have to decide what you're going to do. And what else do you think you have to do once you come up with an idea? You have to research about it. So why would you research about your idea? Why don't you just go into the wet lab and stop, start working on your idea? Because the wet lab is already available. You don't know? Keep going. To see what?
can you see that where you can type that right into your bar? You can get over. Alright, I see some really good ideas coming up. Here. What if paper could be made from old batteries? Regrow bone. Why do people say it's dangerous to wake someone up from their sleep paralysis? Neurology?
state, if we all decided to stop using money, would we trade or steal? So that's getting away from the physical sciences and getting into the social sciences. Hmm. How would people deal with not having money? Who's was that, by the way? That's a really interesting question because you're getting more into social science, which is like a psych psychological type of thing, instead of the physical sciences. So you can focus on something like that, too. We're going we're to take a look at some websites where we're going to have a world view of how people think. You might want to take something like that and, and look at the research. How do people react to this? Or how do people react to that? Take a look at how people reacted to Bitcoin and how much that took off because it was different than regular money trading. Anybody still working? All right. Well, those two are finishing up. Take a look at them. What I want you to do is use other people's ideas to make you think about your idea. Huh, that sounds interesting. Or, I really like that idea, but what if you thought about this instead? This is going to be out there. You're going to be able to access this, and I'm going to post the PowerPoint on um, the Schoology, so you can go back in here and look at this and talk about this for the rest of the five weeks. All right, I'm going to move on right now. We'll come back to that. So after you've made your observation, after you've gone over your research question, now the next step, you need to ask yourself about that research question. Why am I doing this? Am I doing this because my mom and dad told me I should come to SRI and spend five weeks of my summer here? Or are you doing this because your question will help society in some way. So the person who put up there about the plastics, we see what plastic is doing to our environment, we see the sea turtles with plastic wrapped around their neck. If you're going to start researching on an alternative product for plastic that could be biodegradable, how are you helping our environment? You could be saving a lot of animals, sea creatures, humans, by eliminating plastic, which also can be a carcinogen. Society. Talked about the money one, that's a social science. You would be helping society that way. Um, the DNA, that would help society. Medical field. Many of you had questions up there that would help in the medical field, which would then help society. So, what you need to do is take a look at your research question and ask yourself these questions Who is it going to help? Who am I going to help? How am I going to improve the world by doing this research? on number two, that list. Before you begin your research, you need to find out what other researchers have discovered. Not just what anybody out there on the internet makes, but other researchers, actual researchers, who have gone out there and studied things. Take a look at that last question. Does anybody know what that means by empirical research? What's empirical mean? There's research sometimes called second-hand research. Then there's empirical research. What is that? Did you ever hear that word before? Take a guess. Something Kind of. What the empirical research is, is the research scientist actually doing that research and posting his or her results. So what you're going to be doing in the wet lab is going to be empirical research, the hands-on stuff. Now, a lot of times, Journals and different articles will take that research and they'll write about it, and then somebody else will write about that, and it'll grow, and people will write about it. But when you go in to look at research and you see somebody who's actually done the lab report, so if you're looking at a lab report that somebody's actually done, that's empirical research. That's when a scientist or a doctor or somebody has actually done that research and then posted that. So you're going to try to jig as much as you can to find that. What scientist? It's most aligned with what I want to look at. What scientist has done this? When you guys go to college or beyond after college, and you get really get into the sciences, you're going to start looking for professors who do the research that you want to do. And my daughter just spent a year studying professors around the US to see what the professor deals with what she wants to deal with. She deals with parasites, and parasites and animals that can um, transmit diseases to humans. So she found somebody, and she's going to be working with that professor to look at parasites. 
because she found his empirical research. He's going out there and cutting open fish and looking at the parasites that are in fish and animals, and she wanted to do that. So you're going to do that. You're going to go out there and find scientists who have published things about what they have done. What have other researchers written about your idea? And what does the current research tell you about your research idea? So there's going to be some time where maybe you go out there and you have this great idea, what you think is a great idea, and you go out there and you found that a researcher did something and it fell flat and it's not doable and you need to move on and that happens. And that's just as much a part of science as finding something you can do. Finding what you can't do, finding what didn't work is just as important in the research process as finding what does work. Right, so, how do we go about doing that? How many of you in here have ever written a research paper? We're not going to write a research paper, so we're going to we're talking about that tomorrow, actually, with me. <laughs> so I'm not going to have you write a research paper, but there's a reason why you do that. What we're going to be talking about is called a literature review. You're going to go back and review the literature that's already been out there in order to start your process. And you don't need to put anything together. You don't need to hand anything in. It's summertime. Nobody's writing any papers. But you are going to need to go in and read some articles. Because when you read those articles or journal entries, you're going to see what other people have done. And you're going to look for those things. Like, does it sound what you're looking for? Does everybody know what an abstract is? That thing on the beginning of the article that will tell you what the article is about. It's a little tiny paragraph, so when you go in and read something, you don't need to read the whole article. You read that abstract, it will tell you what's in the article, and you can decide that if you like it or not. You can also go and read the first couple of paragraphs, and you'll get an idea of what it's about. And everybody in here has a Google account, right? You don't have your Gmail? You're going to be using a Google folder to put those articles into. So when we go into EBSCO and JSTOR and all of those databases and you find an article, you can dump that right from JSTOR right into your Google folder. And then you can have a Google folder with all of your articles in there that you like. So you can keep them, save them. Now, here are some resources. You know what I'm going to do here is I'm going to share this. Hold on, let me put this on Schoology. So go into Schoology. So when you're in the SRI group, click on that research.
And I can't get you in right now, so maybe you can just like, take a look at something else to screen for a minute. I'm going to show you right there, too. And then we'll talk about that in a little bit. So, so when you get to this page, everybody else on here? Don't you know research link that I posted there? You can't get to that.
we can do it. Yeah. We can all do it as a group. Yeah. So go to your Schoology and click on Groups. And then on the right, go to See All Groups. And once you go to See All Groups, click on School Groups. Change that top drop down to Carmelize or High School. And now scroll down until you see CWLMC. Thing. You're going to keep changing and evolving that. Any questions? 